Top of the morning to you. We're back in Aberdeen and we're looking at ancient salt waterways and canal systems which provided free power. So Aberdeen Harbour. This video here connects with the introduction to the Countess Wells and King's Wells and I'm asking the question what are the wells and hopefully in this recording I'll be able to show um, and input what I believe the wells are Countess Wells and King's Wells and hopefully I'll be able to explain to you by the constellations and what sits over Aberdeen why Countess Wells and King's Wells and Peter Cooter and Mary Cooter and all this area why it's so important to the royals, to the elite, um, to those who have usurped and taken control. So let's get down looking at Aberdeen and before I zoom into Aberdeen I want to point out some prominent, because we're going to look at the waterways or what were ancient waterways, but before we can do that I need to identify certain uh, certain things in the land and we can see here Ferry Hill this is Ferry Hill now we should all be able to see this little star there quite easy to see and the back of Ferry Hill there which is um, what's the name of that area this is the harbour uh, for Ferry Hill so it's the Albury Community Sports Hub that would have been the harbour and the harbour led into you can see here the Bonnetalk called Terrace Gardens because this was a waterway so but I wanted to before we go looking at Aberdeen Harbour itself I want to identify that star fort known as today as Ferry Hill and anybody who knows Ferry Hill which sits just above Duffy Park it all sits in terraces uh, and this, this sort of here with the railway embankment uh, it all sits again up in terraces and you've got Crown Street up near the top top here uh, Balnegask and Torrey and that should be quite obvious by now to anyone who's familiar with my work that that's the starport here and there's a little starport here which is Balnegask so Torrey and Balnegask are completely separate this being the starport of Torrey and this being in a, a little satellite starport uh, the Girdle Nest Lighthouse was possibly another starport so we've identified the two starports and all the rest this is an embankment of the starport uh, all the rest between was water that's why they're public parks now because they get us as I said in the previous video um, we're over 70% water or we have numerous salts in our body which interact with the salts in the moon and the, and the cycles of the, the sun and cause an electromagnetic reaction uh, in our bodies as these move across you can see quite clearly the star port there but these were all waterways all this was all water was this was the embankment or the coastline let's say uh, and there you know the star fort repeats out and out and out as they all do and it's the same with Tory but I wanted to show this waterway so what we're going to do is um, go around the other way and let's head into Aberdeen Harbour uh, now that we've established this is a star fort and that Berry Hill here is a star fort so, is there any other star forts um, or canal systems? Well, this is the canal system here. This has all been blocked up, as I said in the previous cut. All this is concrete. This is all to do with the oil industry. And ever since the oil industry took off in the 60s and 70s, this land has all been developed. But really, it's just all concrete. It's all blocks. It's all masonry. And, you know, this was a waterway that went right through and this here which we understand is the Aberdeen train station 
uh, was the canal system that carried the water in uh, to Union Terrace. So we're going to go back again. Um, this is all car parks. Again, it's all concrete. Um, it's shopping centres because where the water was, uh, you know, you've got the Union Square shopping centre. Where the water was, it's maritime. Maritime is merchant merchants, is merchandise and money and currency. So, uh, and again, we're over seventy percent water. So they put all these um, merchants and corporations, corps that speak to the dead, and um, we're all lost at sea, so we're the dead, so they have us in the waterways, living in the waterways, and this is what I've been trying to show, not only do they have us shopping in the waterways, where the waterways were, are where most of the new housing estates are. So this was, this has been blocked, but this was a giant salt canalway, and um, it, this salt canal would have made its way around uh, Ferry Hill Starport, which I pointed out at the beginning there, is a starport, and the water would have made its way into um, these gardens, Bonacord Terrace Gardens, and worked its way through round. I mean, the names there, Hard Gate, you find the words Gate, South Gate, North Gate, uh, King's Gate, Queen's Gate, all these sort of things. Uh, Castle Gate, these are the corners of the starports, the gates where you would have come into the cities through the waterways. So, um, this here Spring Bank, it's all in the name, uh, Spring Bank Terrace. So, there was a spring or waterway that came through here. But I'm not going to look at that, what I want to do is take you on the journey, <coughs> excuse me, I want to take you on the journey through um, through Aberdeen, through the Rosemount um area through the, the gardens and, and then out to the Afford Road, the all fords where all the waterways met and uh, show people that not only are they hiding these waterways, not only have they drained these waterways, but they enslave us, uh, the living man and the living woman, they enslave us, the being, upon these waterways. And why is that? Because as I've been trying to show, these waterways uh, are, how can I say it, uh, in an easiest term, these waterways, it's as above, so below, and we hear that saying all the time, and what does that really mean? Well, what I've been studying standing stones since I was 10, 12 year old, and the standing stones are up high on the embankments of these once ancient waterways. So, for example, if you come into Aberdeen here, uh, you have the Lang the Langstone, uh, which uh, is up beside uh, it's up in Union Street. There, you've got the Langstone that sits right in the corner of the building, somewhere is it here, uh, Langstone Place. There's I'll, I'll go on and look at it. You have there the Langstone. Now it's been put in there. But it originally sat in this area somewhere, and the reason why is because I don't want to get caught up in looking at mud floods. But the reason why is down here, Windmill Bray, is this a hill? It's a bray, and at the bottom of there is the water. So the water used to be there, but they drained it. This was the canal. So at the top of the hill, eh, marking the boundaries of the water, we find standing stones such as this here, the Long Stain, and it's the same. In the countryside too, the standing stones themselves sit on the high banks. The high banks. We use banks currency today, frequency. <laughs> but these stones, and the word stone, by the way, in Hebrew is ben. Now we take into account that uh, the Egyptian pyramids, we are told, had a ben-ben stone. Ben means sun. So these stones... <laughs> were boundary markers, but more than that, um, these stones marked the waterways uh, and where the waters went. So here's Windmill Bray, and there's that stone here in Langstone Place at the top of the hill. You see, this is a Windmill Bray, a big steep hill, and this here would have just all been water because, as I pointed out at the beginning, very hill of the Starport, and the water went round the Starport, and this deep valley here, which is now a train line, and the Union Terrace Gardens. And if anybody hasn't been to the Union Terrace Gardens, 
uh, to have a look at them since they've renovated them. They are pretty amazing. Uh, but of course they want you to go there because that's where the waters were. And as I keep saying, we are over 70% water and all sorts of salts. And as the electricity of the planets and the stars move over, uh, they move over us, uh, changing the electro frequencies and the magnetic fre fre frequencies sorry, in our body. So what we're looking at here is the Denburn Road. And the Denburn Road, uh, as I said in the first cut um, of this video, the Denburn Road itself marks the wall. So all these pubs like Cy um, Revolution, Cy um, Vodka Bar and all that, these large buildings actually all sat in the canal banks in the canal and the water came up as the tide came in the water would come up. Uh, the Union Terrace Bridge, this bridge wasn't built until I think it was late 1800s, early 1900s, I can't remember the exact date. But the reason why it, it, it was built is because it, it was a deep valley of water and they, they had to, you know, join this end to that end. But before it was just a waterway that came right through here. And these buildings, the bandstands and the arches, these were all to do with energy har harnessing. Now, most of us are oblivious to our own cities. I mean, Aberdeen has a Rosemount Viaduct. This is the, the Rosemount Viaduct that goes all the way up. And most people, I, I didn't, I stayed here for long enough uh, in the uh, way back and never, <laughs> never thought, why is there a viaduct? And I think I've heard people say that the viaduct takes you over the Union Terrace, which is, you know, a big valley. Uh, the reason why it is a valley, and this is what people don't think about, is because this was all water. And these buildings, His Majesty's Theatre, um, this Woman Hill Hospital, this was never a hospital, this was a machine uh, sat on the waterway. Uh, the railway line now runs through here, and this here was a canal, canalway, this railway line, a continuation of the canal that went out uh, and eventually went down into to join the Don, uh, but I'm not going to go down there, that's the canal system that way. What I wanted to do is take take us round the gardens, round the Denburn, round His Majesty's Theatre and follow the waters um, round Denburn up underneath the viaduct. This here, um, these large buildings, I'll try and take my time with this, um, Skeen Terrace. Now the names are very important. Uh, this is where what what joins here. The name Skeen uh, is where we get the word Skeen. Do a dagger, something sharp. To sh it's a, a Gaelic Scots word. It's a Scots word, sorry. Uh, and um, it may be Gaelic too. I'm not sure. Uh, but the the word Skeen uh, also. I'll put this in here. Skeen is very important um, because it's actually a Greek word. Uh, and it's a Greek word for a scene or a building, a false front, uh, in other words. So, in ancient Greece, a theatre or a building playing area that was originally a hut for changing of masks or costume, but eventually became the background before which the drama was enacted. So the word skeen, uh, I've been saying to people uh, for a long time, that Aberdeen, the reason why we have the name skeen, the na reason why we have the name Adelphi, the reason why we have the name Echt, the name, reason why we have the name Lang Stracht, the long straight, and the reason why we have the 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 name uh, the Straight Road, uh, which I'm going to look at. The reason why we have these names is it means to go ahead, to pierce forward, to it means the narrow way. Uh, yes, it means the narrow way uh, when you look at these words, and also you have this uh, Greek theme to it, the Adelphi, because if you read, I was what I was going to say, if you read Combs Combs Beaumont's books, he says that. Uh, in these books and other people say that these lands are the Greek lands and this is the lands of the Adelphi. Uh, Aberdeen is the lands of the Adelphi and the, this is the land of the ancient Greeks. Now I've got Greek friends and or I know people who are, who are Greek and they would be offended by me saying that because that would mean that they are not 
the original Greeks. Well, they're not the original Greeks because the original Greeks wrote and spoke in a, 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 a dialect known as Koine Greek, and today's Greek is completely different from it because the colonial powers have created uh, the Greek nations, uh, the Greek people as, as we understand them. These were the original Greeks, and it's still all there in, in the names and the words. Uh, skin, uh, a skin do, a dagger. It's the skin do, it's the dagger that a uh, Scotsman has. But it actually comes from a Greek word which means a scenery, uh, to be behind the scene. But all these words all connect. Um, these these names, names of places, once you understand the, what they are and the waterways. So we're following this uh, waterway. I want to take you out. So let's turn. I want to take you out um, following the waterway uh, through <coughs> through all these um, ancient buildings, basically, in Aberdeen. And what we're on here is these green spaces. You can see you've got churches, these are charge houses that sat on the waterway, and we're going to fo follow Skeen Street because Skeen Street really is the main canal uh, that takes us out, and all these green areas that you see here, um, these are green because the trees were put in to soak up the water. Uh, as we go further up we hit Ruby's Law Quarry, which is one of the areas, one of many areas where they drain the water. But these, these roadways or these uh, housing developments are so straight um, because there were waterways, there were canal waterways and this canal way goes all the way out um, to Ruby's Law uh, where they drained it and all this here, area here, Craigie Bartler, the Gordon Highlanders Museum these all sat in uh, what was an ancient salt waterway and as the tides came in uh, the tide would come in and fill these canals and the canals were um, dug out in such a way or um, created in such a way around the star forts that um, when the tides came in they would fill every basin and then as the tide came out it would deposit uh, the salt in these basins and then the buildings themselves such as um, the big churches and stuff like that um, would split um, split the electricity so you have this canal here uh, going out, <coughs> going out here, and you have at the corner of a uh, uh, Fountain Hall Road. Again, the name Fountain Hall. <laughs> at the corner of Fountain Hall, you have these large buildings uh, with steeples and domes, and you have the churches on the crossroads where the canal canals meet. And um, this one here doesn't have a graveyard, but this bit at the back would have been a salt pan so as the salt came water came in with the tide and then the salt the tide went down the salt was deposited in these salt pans and these towers um, attracted the piezo electricity and uh, pulled down the electricity from the ether from the air um, which is scientific it's there it's all around us um, people like Tesla even though he was a, a gatekeeper as such, but Tesla showed us that these things, because they have to show us these things. So here at Albine Place, in Carden Place, this Albine Place would have been a massive canal, and this is why we have all these massive properties all along Albine Place, uh, Queen's Terrace and so on. And and as we come into the, the, this area here, like Queen's Terrace, behind the churches, behind these sort of towered buildings, you see green spaces, you know, they've been made into gardens and such now, but if we go down and see, you'll, you'll see that these, these uh, actually have walls. And as uh, my good friend Dan has said time and time again to me, what's the point of building a wall that high and then putting a railing on it? Well, they, they go down much further. And there's various places across the city and other cities where you can actually see uh, these walls go down much, much further. Uh, when you look at the properties, uh, such as, let's just jump in because I know this will be, when you look at the properties, you can see that they're, you know, they're all mud flood properties. I've actually jumped down on one that doesn't show too much of a mud flood, but uh, these are all mud, mud flood properties, showing that there are other levels, the window there. Uh, the same there, there are other levels or another level 
at least below this. And um, oh, we crashed. Let's see if we can get it back again. Anyway, yeah, bad connection. So yeah, the mud flood there. Yeah. So there are other levels below this, and the reason why is because what we see here is tarmac now. This has been filled up by you know five, six, seven feet tarmac and rock and hardcore which is all conductive and tarmac is conductive I mentioned earlier on the word Ben Ben meaning Sun Mac means Sun Tor is Taurus tarmac so there's something in tarmac that carries conduction that conducts uh, a frequency as we travel up and down and uh, you'll notice that most of these roads have a verge in the middle. This is what I keep saying to people. They'll have a sort of, it slopes down. People are saying, but that's for draining so that the water drains off. Yeah, well, that makes sense. But no, this middle part, you see when they're repairing the road sometimes, this middle part was actually a dike or a wall um, that separated one side from the other. And so you had a positive charge and a negative charge. Uh, it could be that one was salt water coming in and the other was rain, um, fresh water coming down. I don't know, but I know I've seen maps from the 14, 1500s and these maps are available. You can find them uh, in our city plan, town, town plan. Um, this, you know, um, you can see the maps have positive symbols on one side of the road and negative. These are drawn maps. Uh, uh, and it used to puzzle me what was the positive for and what was the negative. And it was only when I began to look at the buildings I realised that usually the positive had crosses on on them and the negative, uh, which I was seeing. So you've got crosses there and the balls were the negative. Now I don't know if that is just, a th you know, something that I've found. It's just by coincidence or whether that is exactly how it works. I believe it is. I believe one side of the road is positive and one side is negative. We certainly do see that in old maps. So as we come along Albine Place here, this is the waterway um, that, that comes down and um, yeah, all this here was all underwater. And you can see where the dark forests are here, these deep this is actually um, the Denburn, I think, that passes through, and this is why uh, they say, oh, it's the, oh, the burn, of burn of Ruby's Law, sorry, not the Denburn. Uh, the Denburn is what carries out, or used to carry out the canal, and then it joins the Den uh, of Ruby's Law. And down here where we have the Gordon Highlanders Museum, again, this is all marsh. Um, it's excellent, actually, if you go down here. Uh, I don't want to get too caught up and going down because I'll lose, <laughs> lose my thing, uh, connection again. But this, what the purpose of this is to take you out to show you where the wall, um, where the wall uh, at King's Wells uh, joins up. So you've got a dam here, you see that it's actually said Walker Dam. So they blocked the water here and then of course you've got Ruby's Law Quarry where they've dug down maybe a, a mile or a couple of mile down and then they dig across and then everything collapses in and the water disappears and this is why when you go and buy property you know you've got sort of mine shafts and all that to um, to consider when you're getting um, uh, surveys done on the property you know because most of our land has been mined or quarried um, and yeah when you go to buy a house you see this in the survey reports that uh, mines and shafts are usually not far from where you purchase the property because these waterways were everywhere we under we uh, perceived the British Isles we call it the British Isles but we perceived the British Isles as this big landmass when it isn't it was thousands millions of starports and uh, these starports um, and themselves were islands isles and the people who lived upon them, the Greeks, the Thracians, the Phoenicians, the Canaanites, eh, and the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Akkadians, this is the land of all these people. And they, you know, they lived in their own boundaries separated by water. So, yeah. So back to Aberdeen and we're, we're out by the Ruby's Law Quarry. And we're following this waterway out, there's little bodies of water which you can see, this here, all this area was just all, all water, 
all of this area was just all underwater. Uh, again, they get us hockey clubs, football clubs, rugby clubs, uh, gyms, sports facilities, schools, they all sit in the water. Uh, I pointed this out a few times, there's a big star port there, uh, you've got a big waterway there, and this waterway here, there's a star port here, there's a star port at Cults, but the waterway passes around where we see all these trees, this is where the water is. Uh, and it takes us out to um, where I'm heading for, King's Wells. So all this area was an ancient waterway. Let's get back again to the Ruby's Law, the Ruby's Law Quarry. And this waterway, you can see where it's still fed. Uh, and there's this word skeen. The word skeen means uh, to, to go straight on, the narrow way. And it's the same as the word uh, stracht. So we've got the long, the lang stracht. It means to go straight, to, to go straight, to go straight on. And you can see how this road is so straight. Uh, uh, this isn't the lang stracht, by the way, but these are. This was seen. This whole area, uh, whether it's Echt, Dunecht, uh, the Strake Road, or uh, the lang stracht, or the old long straight. Uh, these these ancient roads. Here's the lang stracht. There, isn't it? Uh, these old long straight roads sat above this ancient waterway here. So this hazel head and all that was an ancient waterway, uh, a massive waterway. But the question is, what is this waterway? And this is where my research has taken me uh, just recently. Well, it hasn't taken me just recently. It's taken me on this journey since I was 10. But I first examined the House of Cephas, uh, which is a constellation above Aberdeen uh, when I was 10 year old. And basically, this uh, the House of Cephas sits. Well, I'll just I'll just map it on here as as we are here. Uh, the, the House of Cephas sits sort of uh, let's uh, sort of down. Yeah, this may be just a bit too far. The House of Cephas sits kind of that area, and it's known as the House of Resurrection or the house of Peter. So, um, no, that's not too good, is it? But that, the house of Cephas is a house that's upside down and it basically sits over Aberdeen in that area. So what we're looking at here, uh, what I'm trying to show is the waterway passes around um, as above, so below, passes around the house. And these are all marked by the standing stones. So, so that didn't work too well because my um, <laughs> my internet connection is terrible for some reason. It's always the same when I'm trying to do these. So the the waterway passes out uh, all the way out this area here, and what we understand is uh, Loch Skeen was part of this massive massive waterway. Everything's been dammed here. 